Hey, today on the show, beer expert, hip hop expert, music expert, and a guy who's been around since MySpace. No, it's not the 1880. It's 2024 with Keith Billis. You are live in the lab. Hi, I'm Keith Billis, and this is Live in the Lab. All right. A little bit of weirdness in front of the camera there for anybody who's watching. So I'm like, hey, where's the button? Where's the button? I can't get it going. How did you go viral on TikTok? You were on America's Got Talent. How much do you get paid to be on AGT? Oh, you didn't get paid. Keith and Steve here in the live in the lab. You're a great interviewer. I love it. 48 miles, 48 hours. And not just once. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I hit 50 last time and I'm like, yeah, things are a little different than they were 10 years ago. So trust me, things are to keep you. have no time for the BS that much yeah. of society seems to put on the table. Why is that? Like what you're talking about is real right now. Right? There's just no bullshit here, but it's just real. We brought you in with some Marley. I said, Joseph, let's talk music for a second. You said, well, Keith Oldies, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I've never talked to a sir before. Why are you a sir? In many ways, we're the same story. I came from nothing. <laughs> You came to me. I think the old saying goes that if you want a trophy, you climb Everest. If you want respect, you climb K2. I've built my own myself, and it's pretty fascinating when you can have a conversation with yourself with your own knowledge. Have you done that before? Why are we rushing to make these tools if they're all they're going to do is hurt humanity? Does the world need an Oppenheimer moment with AI? What a fun show. Hey, nation. Hey, what do you think of that? What do you think of the sunglasses too? Oh, we gotta get rid of that there. I threw some sunglasses on for us today to bring in some hip hop vibe for our guest, Greg Thorne, beer expert, joining me today live in the lab. Fast talker guys here today. Yeah. So listen, I, I, I think I might not have much of a voice. I don't know. I've been screaming at the hockey game last night. I did the morning show with Nicole Bernard this morning. If you missed the morning show, you missed something pretty cool. We talked to Vincent Valentine and Andy Booth about generative AI girlfriend yeah girlfriend ai so they're not here to replace your girlfriend nope they say hey keith no we're not here to replace your girlfriend no we're here to supplement i'm like what oh yeah we're here to help you make your way through your relationship with your girlfriend so we're creating partner.ai they tell me so i would invite you to check out the conversation from this morning fascinating conversation with vincent valentine andy booth we talked about girlfriend.ai and how that will impact your lives gentlemen the ai revolution is upon us and there's a bunch of people out there coming to take our cash no not, not listen i'm not skeptical i'm not trying to suggest i'm skeptical by any means just know a lot of people out there are going to try to take your cash going to try to suggest things and do things and sell you things that you might not be thinking about and, and i say that because when i went into my conversation this morning i thought one thing about about the, the folks over at cognitive.ai girlfriend.ai by the the end of the conversation completely different impression so i would encourage you to go check it out fun conversation taught me a lot about what they're trying to do over there but uh, this morning girlfriend.ai this morning's in the lab with keith and nicole speaking of we go here we go drop yep, linkedin youtube x all the great platforms we stream monday to friday seven till nine you find us here on the streams and then of course we've got the noon show live in the lab with keith phyllis and of course today craig thorne is joining us he comes to us from the myspace era yeah i, I was around during the myspace era i think i gotta take my sunglasses off for this one i i, I was around I think when TwitPic was around too, I'm concerned that Craig might actually be looking into TwitPic archives with some of my old pictures sitting up there. I'm like, oh my God, I got pictures up there. And of course, he's a, he's a big, great podcast, the Bales, Bales podcast, I think it's called. So Craig's going to join us here in a couple of minutes. And of course, yesterday, we had Elisa Butler, Pierre, join us here in the lab. Fascinating conversation about structuring your business. So if you're running a company, entrepreneur, and you're thinking all about sales, and you're forgetting about the foundation of the business, tomorrow is a show you want to be a part. I'm sorry, yesterday's show is something you want to listen. And last but not least, before I welcome Craig into the lab, I want to do a shout out to a new community that I walked into today. Thank you, Darren Mass. Thank you, Nat Berman, for welcoming me and introducing me to and including me in the brand built community i'm pleased to be there i'm pleased to be your friendly talk show host there you go it's true dad's an entertainer right kids dad is an entertainer i think craig thorne mates know about that i suspect he's an entertaining fellow so why don't we turn the music down turn our attention to the young man sitting in the green room over there and bring in mr craig thorne good evening good afternoon actor how you doing i'm fantastic how are you my friend thank you for having me bro yeah, absolutely. So the Bales podcast, did I say it correct? It's an acronym, but I would say B-A-O-S. I would say 90% of people say Bales because I didn't put dots in there. there. <laughs> Taking ownership already. Got to, bro. It's my, <laughs> definitely my fault. Yeah, so it's great. a set for the podcast. You are from Melbourne, Australia, but I believe you're joining us in Canada. Am I correct? That is correct. I'm in Hamilton, Ontario. I think you're in Winnipeg, yeah? yeah I'm just down the road. Hell? Just down the road, just look around the corner, look out east, and we get. Oh, see, I'm waving at you. Catch it out there. My favorite brunch spots ever. Love that. Place. Oh yeah, where did you go? Clementine downtown. 
Oh, there you go. Nothing That's, better. Talk about it. It was like seven talk. So your story is fascinating to me. Yeah, it's unique. So it's funny because it's normal to you. It's what you've lived. But to those that would from the outside looking in thinking, oh, okay. Social media, digital marketer, entrepreneur. He's been around since the MySpace area, doing some work with uh, Ashton Kutcher on the red carpet back in 1984. A joke. <laughs> Might as well be. It's funny because I saw Carson Daly on The Voice a couple days ago and I was talking to uh, my morning show host, Nicole Bernard, and I said, have you seen Carson Daly lately? No. Yeah, you should go check. It's not 1980 TRL anymore. Wow. I guess he must. What? Come on. No. I'm 52. He so must. Then... No, he's not pushing 60. No. I'm, I, I'm, he's got to be in his 40s, though. I feel like I'm 42 and I feel like he was mad <laughs> on. So it could just be a, a misconception. <laughs> From back in the day, because you know when you're in your 20s or teens, everyone's old. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's so it. the audience, oh my goodness, you've just actually ruined the rest of my day. <laughs> oh, the, hey, the audience so is you... tuning into me is thinking, I'm listening to some ancient guy with his sunglasses on playing some hip hop thinking he's fucking cool. If it makes it any better, I have a significantly more gray and I am 10. I think you're looking pretty damn good. I would not have believed. I thought we we're about the same age. I was, I was looking at your face while you were doing it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, but, but I'm going to suggest those those hairs of wisdom have been well earned, haven't they? I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, you can't really go back. You can start dying them. You look weird. Yes. Can't, can't be doing it. So, I'm a, so, my, so Business Athlete Nation knows uh, old Uncle Keith here as a curious soul. Love to be curious. Love to ask curious questions. And what put you on my radar and what jumped out really was not only your love for beer, not only your love for music, hands up, love for hip hop, hands up, just your history. You've been around a while like myself. So you've been, you've tickled the MySpace era. You've tickled TwitPic. I'm like, oh my God, these brands that I, I'm familiar with have been around digital marketing for a while. And so fascinating to me. And now you continue on with, with your company, which is high season, right? Oh, correct, right. Yeah. So where do we start, man? Let's start in Melbourne. What brought you from yeah. Melbourne over to North America? So that was the, so uh, my brother, so both of my brother and I have been M's for releasing music for 22 years, I think. So it's a long ass time. And we had a small, not specifically significant, we had a, a distribution. I don't know if you remember around the time when MySpace was pop, there was what's known as the blog. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes, I so do. 100%, one I do. of the sort of, not the upper echelon blogs, but teetering on Kevin Nottingham. So he had, I can't remember what it was, KevinNottingham.com, but he had another. Okay. So he was the first blogger to start a record. So he okay. had, he gave us a distribution. But he was one of the larger bloggers who supported us. And we thought that was so cool being in Australia and getting yeah. all the love in North America. So then he signed us and we we're like, okay, we need to be over. I happen to have lived in Toronto in 2004 on like the working holiday thing that Australians do. And I loved it. I wanted to go and back, I wanted and, to go back <laughs> and basically figured out how to do that. So we moved back, my brother and I, and two other people who are part of the crew who left maybe a year in. But yes. my brother and I have been here. It's been 13 and a half years, I think, no uh, in Canada. Citizen, voting, homeowner, dog owner, business store. But music was what predominantly brought me but i had a sort of started in toronto and then my girlfriend i couldn't stay in canada and my girlfriend and who i still with and met her maybe six months in she was like why don't we move to montreal because we went did a nice weekend in montreal any can anyone's done a weekend in montreal you fall in love with the damn place yes. and i was like fuck yes let's do it so we went to mcgill and learned french to get me a work permit uh, sorry a study permit just to keep me in the country and we stayed there for 10 years and we did a whole bunch of stuff from there now we're we bought a place out here in hamilton which is closer to fast stuff that's fantastic it's been a journey man if there's anything that i in my experience with folks from down under or new zealand australia down under for, for the most part adventure is at the heart of your culture adventure is at the heart of your soul isn't it, it really is am i wrong not at all i never thought of it but you're I, right i think it's anybody i've met has not been shy to adventure explore the world move plant seeds somewhere else no different than when i tease my american colleagues my american friends who and i don't know if you've recognized this as well craig but they're just so quick and easy to move i'm done with la i'm moving to new york oh i don't want to be in oklahoma i'm heading to kansas and it's, it's fascinating to me how quick they are to just not they how quick my american friends are boom they're just moving away all the time and I'm, I, we talk about that a bunch. I'm glad you brought that up. It's because in Australia and Canada are very similar. Australia yes. actually has a larger or about the same geographic region as the continent state, but there's five major cities, whereas America has 10 right. hundreds of cities at the size of Hamilton or Windham. Yeah. So Canada is the same. Canada's got whatever the three big guys and all the rest are smaller. And there's just not as many options. The land is vast and there's just not as many cool places where 
Hamil- when we were moving from Montreal, we wanted to buy. We were trying to buy a Montreal. Then we're like, my girlfriend was like, why don't we move back to Ontario? Looked at Toronto. Never, uh, everyone talked about the house price. But when we yes. looked at okay, they're talking about. We didn't want to live in a suburb. So then we like, where else can we go that's not a suburb? Been to Hamilton because, and we liked it. And we thought this would be a great place. But I don't, in America, there's hundreds of Hamiltons in every state. Yes. Yes. But there's three in Ontario or whatever. Kingston, Barry, Dundon, Guelph. Okay, there's more. But you know what I'm saying? There's not many. You could yes. go and list a ton of them in York or wherever. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is interesting. I'm very jealous of Americans. They have the whole, every landscape you could possibly want. Like you said, LA to New York. You could be in snow, beach, Florida, like wherever. 100%. You get it all. Quick and dirty, quick and dirty. So you're, so you're settled in Canada. Yep. You are probably early 2000s or so, I'm suspecting. Social media is starting to, or actually at the time, wasn't even called social media, user-generated uh, content. Probably. I didn't even yeah. remember. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, because I was starting my social media company at the time here in Canada, okay. early 2000s. Early 2000s, okay. Yeah, so YouTube had not even, so YouTube was just being sold. Twitter was still early Twitter. Yes. Uh, the other platform that were trying to be Twitter were out there in the marketplace. I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head. MySpace was around, of course. Friendster was dying yeah. out. Friendster. Yeah. So I, yes, you are involved in the MySpace era, but then the TwitPic era. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a time it is actually yeah because i don't think people are listening or not thinking about what twitpic no, was no people you wouldn't even comprehend it it was so for people who don't know so myspace came along after i lived in toronto in 2004 came back yeah and when i was living in 2004 there was no facebook that, so what, what i had to do to share stuff back home i got like my digital camera i had to go to black's the <laughs> camera store get two copies of the cd yeah. mail one home to mom and dad so it didn't get lost and kept yes one. And I uploaded it to this website called bugbitten.com. Put your travel photo. So there wasn't anything like that. Then when I discovered MySpace, it blew my mind because you could be in touch with all the rappers in the States that you wanted. But then when Twitter started popping, you couldn't upload. It, you could, it was literally 140 characters and that was it. There was nothing else you could do. You couldn't have gifts. There was nothing. So one way around it was a third party company made a website called twitpick. Dot com. So I worked for, it was called Roadshow Films, which is owned the Warner Brothers subsidiary in Australia. Yeah. So they did like Harry Potter and the second. So I worked for them doing social in 2009, 2010. And they had the offices were above the cinema and they did a bunch of red carpet stuff. So there was a movie called Killers in 2010 with Ashton Kutcher. So yeah. I was in my iPhone 3GS. You can imagine how bad these photos were. And I'm like watching him and they're like, I guess the PR girls are stuff taking the photos and they go into TwitPic, uploading it to that and then sharing it to the Twitter. Such an ancient concept. And so crazy, but that's how different it was even in 2010, which doesn't seem that long. It doesn't seem that long ago. And what fascinated me when I saw that he was part of TwitPic was I started thinking about, okay, companies like, was it, it, it how do you pronounce it? Imager or Imager? Oh, Imger, Imger, I think. Imger, yeah. TwitPic, all the pictures that us humans put out there that really didn't think much about. Where are they now? What are they doing now? What AI have they been trained on? Who owns them? Who are they sitting? Like all those questions. Like, which one did I put up on TwitPic back in 2010 that I don't want to have on the internets today? Do you follow me, Craig? I to- and you know what? When you were doing the intro, I Googled. I were Keith Ballou. TwitPic, nothing came up. So you're, oh, you're like... That's funny. That's that's absolutely funny. I, so, I reckon the website must have been got rid of data. They had... Or they're on some server somewhere. Yes. I got to think... So here's... I'm not naive and you're not naive enough to think either. Nobody deletes shit. So they're on a, they're on a server ready for black men. Yeah. So I don't know if people were as nefarious. There you go. As far as the users, we I don't even know what I took photos of. It definitely wasn't anything I shouldn't like. Because it was so annoying to put the photo up. There's so much so effort, like, right? So many steps to so much friction to do it. So much friction. That's a great that's a perfect word. So there's no I don't know about you, but I don't think I did anything. Like I still understood that Twitter was whilst it wasn't really popular in Australia for quite some time, pump, and I wasn't putting anything that would have been it would have been just like, so I'm not, I got nothing to worry about, but yeah. I don't think most users are going to go and put body parts up there and stuff. Would be what, my guess. what fascinates me so much about friction is that what people, so what you and I took for granted back in the time, trying to upload images to, to TwitPic or pick to yeah, TwitPic at the time, because we wanted to get our pictures up there. Yet this little company by Systrom and Krieger started called Instagram, and they solved this problem of removing the friction. Mm. By the time that you and I uploaded the picture, and while we were doing all the tagging, adding the metadata, and accept those three or four steps in between hitting upload, to the by the time we would hit submit, that was the magic in their experience, which was they removed the friction of those four steps from you and I going upload to then post. By the time we went post, it was already 
post it. And there was no friction for you and I for that experience. Oh, that's magic. It just happened. That's remember that? I very much remember that. I think I, I wasn't that. I, I, Instagram launched 2010, I believe. I got on 2011 because it felt like a photographer's site. But yeah, you were right. Because I only was really, I knew a few people who were using it. It's like something. Yes. It was like, you are right. I never thought of it as far as solution to that friction. I don't recall when Twitter introduce photos on there but i think by the time they did instagram potentially had taken off and yeah. it was yeah. i recall reading the book about krieger and system and the start of their it was called the instagram effect and they talked about that was their key problem that went they, obviously they started out as bourbon and ended up as instagram but they discovered that by removing that friction people's usage went like this huh. and it was just that psychologically because you're like okay so if i show craig that once he hits upload the photo's actually uploading behind him because every app up until then was hit upload, finish the steps, and then submit, and then it started uploading. Where it was they took the approach of, no, the moment you hit upload, add, it's starting to upload behind, you're doing, you're adding the metadata, the captions, the title of it, and then when you hit submit, it's actually already literally just waiting to go public that's a great and that was so that was the key thing that differentiated that they was it was fast it was faster than everybody else it was faster than visco it was faster than facebook it was faster than every twitter it was faster than every picture sharing experience possible because from the time i hit upload to the 27 seconds or 12 seconds for me to hit submit it was ready to go i was adding my filters on it so again they just they were one of their strong red threads through the business craig was removing the friction and i'm again i'm all about adding nuggets to, to my to my audience here is but those things we don't think about that's pretty important stuff yeah but and i guess it shows how important that was given instagram strength in the market obviously right. the dominant force and essentially became arguably really sure. what social right. media you know, the, the moment something is latent for an instant second we get frustrated mm. Did right. we back then? Do you think? I just don't remember. I, I do. Well, no, I don't think we did because we were just so grateful that we had this. We, yeah, we just were so grateful we had these technologies, right? Yeah, that's a good point. And I guess I recall even then. Now I'm thinking back. People weren't using Facebook like that. I'm pretty sure that Facebook had that photo album thing yes. going on back then. Bingo. But it wasn't being used as the way Instagram no. was or Twitter was. So it was separate. You go out. I, I saw like a meme or something the other day where it was like, oh, the kids these days don't know what it was like in 2009 when you took your digital camera to a party and put yeah. 273 photos, just your friends standing around drinking. Because yeah. that's what we did. We did in hindsight, but that was what it was. But it, yeah, that was not the same way because you had to come home. And they, I guess camera phones were around in 2000. Yeah, they were. Yeah, the palm tree. Whack. It, wasn't it, was. it was very much different. So as a seasoned digital marketer, social media marketer, somebody who's been around you know, this space for a while, a content creator, I'll call it. When you wake up today and you look around, you look around your peers, you look around the industry, what comes to mind, Craig? As far as maybe like the impact of social? Just, like on general, the world, just in general? Just generally, yeah. It's just, we're talking 10 years to go till now. You've been around since MySpace and TwitPick. When you look around now, at just the marketing industry and the world that you're working in now, what do you, AI everywhere, content creators everywhere, the term influencers somewhat been moved aside. Now we're creators. Talk to me about your perspective. Give me your TED talk, two minute TED talk in front of the audience of your POV on digital marketing in 2024. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's an interesting time. It's definitely changed a lot. I guess the, what's the word? The sort of flooding the market of everybody trying to be an influencer, which I hate that word. I'm very happy that it started to become more creative because you can't call yourself an influencer. Yes. But the, it's... I guess originally it was supposed to be a social media. Now it's become this whole, it was supposed to be a social thing. And that's what we used it. Like talking about MySpace. That was the epitome of social, using it primarily to connect. Mm -hmm. And that's what Instagram did as well to a degree, or it became maybe your first photo album, you're up. Mm -hmm. and then over time, it's become this sort of beast unto itself that further away from where the original intention. So Tiffany and I, my, my girlfriend, we have high season our agency and we have a YouTube channel and we do all, all the content and stuff through there. And we we always talk to people about hey remember it is social media be social engage talk get in the dm we mostly speak to small businesses and i think that element of social has been forgotten so that is just an interesting i don't think it's necessarily bad or good probably not the greatest thing because as soon as you take away that human connection what is it just everyone think first you're just trying to show how good you are or whatever it is or it becomes a flyer which is just as weak. And then the AI side, that kind of worries me a bit because I've received emails from people, like from clients that were clearly written in chat GPT and I had to ask them. I was like, you don't talk. What are you doing? I'm worried that people will lose what social, like again, coming back, meant to be social. Humans connect humans. If we take AI 
to the point. I know it's going to change. I'm sure next week it would be 10x better than it was Ray Kurzweil clarity stuff. But like how it's going to take a while before it really gets good. But people are using it as if it's that good now. And then are we just going to, is it going to be robots talking to robots, trying to impress the algorithm, which is a robot? Are we going to lose the essence of this whole thing? That's my main concern, I would say, right? The over, I think the creator side, the influencer, the typical thing is dying down a little bit. And there's, and there's more, attention more attention on the smaller on the small creators one. who can actually move the needle within a given niche, particularly say we're in craft beer. We are one of the bigger accounts and podcasts and stuff in craft beer because we've been doing it for nine years. You know, So most people haven't done that. So that would be why, but it's still, t the numbers are tiny, can, the larger ones, but we can move the needle more because it's so small and the people who listen really listen. So I think that's a great thing. But yeah, AI worries, unless it's used as a tool, which I think is great. If you use it as a tool in your business, maybe to help you write the captions and you change it up to make it more human, I would, things like that. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes and to see how people embrace it. I think some people are going to be slow to embrace it and then others are going to over embrace it. Like it's going to be weird and I've already had a fair action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I, I'm appreciative of your comments around a tool because I, like you, have seen the inundation of AI, yeah, AI generated emails, text everywhere. Hence, I took a different approach with how I greeted you into the lab. Mm. I sent you a video. I sent you a personalized yeah. video. Um, and then I used AI tools to make that process go fast, right? So instead of generating an AI generated email, I thought to myself, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send my guests videos, welcoming them human videos. But in order to do it with scale, I will then use t tools to pull it together and, and process them and get them sent out. I, but so but the, I've taken that different approach, but I've, I've put the text aside and embraced the video for that reason alone. That's a fantastic way. And that was really great, by the way. That was like a cool touch. I'm like, all right, this is a real dude. It's not someone who actually has yeah. researched. Well, and so it worked. It worked, right? Because I'm like, there you go. Here's me. Here's I'm a human being behind the. And as we both know, Craig, is more AI generated shows and generated newscasts and podcasts and human beings show up behind the camera. I'm really striving for that. I'm looking you in the eyes, that human connection. Very much so. And that it's more meaningful than ever because of- I think, yeah. and I'm really pleased that you said a few moments ago that social is not about just pulling out your wanker and watching. And your, your, your term, because I've been observing social as of late. And it, it's social in many ways today is old school broadcast television. There's so many people consuming Instagram, consuming TikTok, consuming yeah. our show on LinkedIn, consuming YouTube, which to me suggests there's a massive opportunity for creators like yourself and myself because there's a lot of people consuming. Mm. But then what I've also learned as I've been doing this show on LinkedIn, Craig, is that it's one thing to broadcast. And Matt, oh, now I got to tell the world my secret. Do I got to tell yeah. the world a secret? Oh, man. All right. I mean, Here's I, the hook. Here's the hook. Here's the hook. Okay, I need to. So it's one thing to broadcast into LinkedIn where the people are but the moment you start engaging with them while you're on the air and they go and click on oh who's this keith guy clicks on his profile boom comes to my site oh the guy's live because typically when you click on somebody's profile you go to their banner you just see their banner you, you just see a static image maybe it's ai generated maybe it's something so two things start to happen people come to my profile they see me oh he's a live human being and then what i learned is that now i start going and engage with craig and engage with people and it was that dull moment because i started a social media company i was quite successful at it and sold it and it was all about community management but when you get back into the world of creating content i think you naturally forget i got to go engage with people instead of just spamming them with myself. It, I still wonder why, how it got, like, how did we forget that was the point? You know what I mean? It's like the, maybe like the whole, the only way I can think of is like that Instagram cult took over. Yes. Everybody wanted and well, that sort of flex, look better, more successful than the next guy. But it is though, Craig, yeah. isn't it? Because that perpetuated me, right? So if I'm all about being me, instead of coming over to Craig's community ongoing and asking how I can contribute, asking how I can help and ask mm. how I can be a part of it. Now what I'm really doing is, it's all about you and the community, isn't it? I've kind of shifted the tone, I've shifted the conversation. Hmm. So, because I think naturally you'll learn about me by me making it about you. If I elevate you, you're naturally going to learn about me, no? Because you're going to, the reciprocity, you're going to be like, hey, this guy's really curious and he's really thoughtful and he's kind and he's actually asking questions and cares. So I'm like, I need to know more about this person. Yeah, great point. It seems so, it seems socially natural, no? Yeah. But yet to your point, so many yeah. of us. You're so right. Are just flicking on TikTok, right? Or flicking on Instagram. Yep. And, and make, I guess if nothing's really speaking to them, it's just, they're not doing what you're saying. They're not bringing anything to a community because they're probably in the head like about, well, how can I present all this person success or like a internal, maybe looking internally too much mm -hmm. as opposed to how can I help? Like even for the high season stuff. So we have a YouTube membership, but we started maybe six, it's going great. I'm loving it because we having a smaller group of people that we can ha give so much more time to subscribers at large, difficult to talk to. So then you've got the people who actually care, who are willing to pay money and 
it's never about us. It's never, we're just, and we're, all we're ever doing is obviously they're asking questions and asking our opinion. It was just, this came to mind as you were saying, they end up caring about us because we cared about how they were going. So yes. it's genuine. And we're asking about that. We want to know what their wins are and what their challenges help. And that has created a community. And there has been some personal questions of us, but we don't care. It's not about us. This is about that giving back. And that's that community. But what you said, it's like slowly they're curious more about our dog, different things that they probably wouldn't have cared about them. And, and it's coming from a genuine place. I think that's mm -hmm. yeah. what's also changed for you in terms of what you've shared. You've been around social, again, we joke since MySpace, you've shared a lot of content online. You're still sharing content now. Do you find yourself more selective with what you're sharing today than what you shared yesterday? Oh my dude, I couldn't care less about me. I don't, I don't, on my personal one, it's for music. So if I'm not posting about music, I don't post. I, cause I don't care. And even I'm just too many other things to worry about. I even had a friend recently who was a client. She was like, what's your personal? I'm like, I don't have one. She thought it was really weird that I didn't have one where I post my breakfast. So I just, I have zero interest in posting unless it's to promote something or to contribute something of value. I, I just don't find that I want to put something out there into the ether that's not contributing. Like even right now, we've done music for such a long time. I'm on a bit of a hiatus and it's great because I'm like, I don't know if I want to say, I don't have anything really to say right now. I've said so many things for 20 to put something out because the algorithm says so. So I'm like, it's made me question even whether I want to do music aggressively or serious. Because I'm like, if I'm not going to say something, it's like my friends told me this is an interesting thing for music and you'd appreciate this as a marketer. In 1990, I don't know where he got these stats from. So this is my friend. Yeah. He was like, in 1999, there were about 10,000 active art. And that was probably because the only way to get on was either be a local band, try and do your thing, or you're a signed label. Yes. And to, as of say last year, there's 10 million art. He said, the lake that we were trying to cross became yes. as we were trying to cross. So his artist friends don't feel bad if you didn't get, because we were starting this in 2002, early releasing music, do this. And I moved across the world like for this and left everything. And then it didn't pan out. I'm happy that it didn't, to be honest, because it's but the idea of it, like now there's so many artists putting out, what is it? Forget the number. something absurd, like so new songs per day on Spotify, something ridiculous. So artist discovery is essentially impossible. So then what am I going to do? Just go and put more digital static into the universe for what? For my own ego? Like I've got, I've said a lot of stuff. I'm proud of all the things I've put out. So I don't need to put, and I feel the same way with the content. So it's a, I wish more people thought that way because now there's just so much stuff to wade through. You can't possibly see everything. And there's so much stuff that doesn't have value. And I'm just, why am I letting you end up wasting your time? So this is fascinating to me because you, mu musician, MC, you have over here actively worked on an active music career in pause right now. I laugh with my kids. I say, hey kids, dad's an entertainer. <laughs> What do they think? Of course they do. Yeah. yeah. Even though all my, all, even though my sons, all my son's buddies, all love this. And all, they all love listening to Keith. Hey, oh yeah, it's Carter. Keith's on the air right now. And Carter's like rolling his eyes. But <laughs> anyway, so, I, so I say to my kids, dad's an entertainer. And then sometimes people look at me like, you're trying to be a fucking entertainer in 2024 to entertain people. I'm like, yeah. I am. I'm going to give it a shot. And I, I even said to myself last Friday, I'm like, so why can Mr. Beast be Mr. Beast? And why can't I be like the next Letterman or Leno or of or Snyder? Or I'm just drawing comparisons because I want to be my own Keith Billis, like Rogan, Stern. I'm doing my own thing. And if I'm passionate about it, why can't I succeed at it? Then I talk to you and not to be demore, not to have a reality check. But it is a reality check, isn't it? Because get up, you're like, oh yeah, you're competing with the whole world every single day for their attention. You are. One thing, I think it's an adjustment of expectations. Is really, I think it is because I had my last, I had an album that I got, I don't know if you're familiar, but there's a thing called Factor. It's a government program for I am. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah, I figured you might. So I got a Factor grant. I was, I'm a Factor juror um, okay. yeah. as well. So I knew how to do it. Learned. So I finally got a grant. It took me ages. Obviously I'm a newer Canadian and, yes. and it's harder for me to get in. I don't have, have, but I got the Factor grant. I had this album I'm super proud of. I finally had no samples, which obviously was a big thing in hip hop. So I was able to put it out there, man. I couldn't, I had the expectation millions on all the, the songs. Cause I really truly think that if they got tension, that it deserved then it could actually achieve that and it just didn't and i couldn't get a publicist for the life of me i had money finally to put into it money to put into music videos we always did zero budget stuff that was always like just creative with my friend in montreal and mm. had all this stuff i was so proud and it didn't pan out and i was like okay i'm mad disappointed but i'm only disappointed because of my expectations and then that was in 21 uh, 
So now it's been a couple of years and I slowly got more jaded over time because I'm seeing things that I personally, not great quality, get a lion's share of media attention and people's attention. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to be a clown or a buffoon online because that's what they get attention. Because it's not about music anyway. It's about your personality yeah. and this ridiculous shit online that I'm not being party to. I'm also not 21. I'm not trying to, even then I wouldn't have done it. It's more, if I'm going to do music, and this is coming back to your the reality side of things. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I have something to say that I'm proud of. I like the song that I put out just like with the podcast it's craft beer mostly North America a bit in Australia stuff but primarily North America extraordinarily niche but I know that I can go into almost any brewery in Ontario and almost every time someone will wreck because I my face is very prominent and it's such a small that I'm I believe I feel the impact that I'm making in that mm. if that makes sense right well, it does and that and that's where that's where you're able to monetize that too because you sat inside of a niche and you've showed up constantly for nine years no one everyone starts apart they laughed at me I had beef because they were all making fun of me. this and now all these same dickheads are all got box and they won't stick with it because as you know very doing this is hard it's yes. a lot of f money there's equipped sets there's audio mixing there's all editing like people aren't gonna they'll do it for a bit they get to 10 episodes so that's why i'm convinced and i and maybe i'm naive and maybe this is one of those stupid entrepreneurial beliefs and, may, and maybe you can relate to what i'm going to say next but this inherent belief that i can accomplish anything like oh yeah of course i'm going to be successful like looking at your you're thinking to me you've just met me 45 minutes ago you're thinking ah oh, fuck bill it's nice it's not going to happen but yet as i'm looking at you in the eyes there's no doubt in my there is zero doubt in my mind if i'm just using the metaphor Right now I'm in the club playing for maybe 50 people, a couple hundred people. I, I can see that the concert hall is around the corner over there. And then around the corner from the concert hall is going to be maybe some arenas. But I see the stadium. Like it's not even a question mark for me. Yet when I talk to people, they're like, oh yeah, keep going, Billis. But in my mind, Craig, I'm like, yeah, but I show up every single day. I'm working real hard at this. Uh, not many people do a live show twice a day, every single day with trying to reiterate 1% every single day. Mm -hmm. So my attitude is if I can outlast 99% of everybody else, I can win. Facts. Am I'm I wrong? wrong? No, that is so right. And I would, I don't want any of this to come across garage. You are. No, no, that's, well, this is awesome. Because I, listen, I'll tell you another secret. I'll tell you another secret. These shows for, for sale. So I find experts like you who've been around for a while. And I'm like, okay, how can I learn from Craig so I can last for nine years like he's been around? Love that. That's what I do for the pods too, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know a lot about beer, but not because I'm smart, because I talk to people way smarter than me. Yes, and I, just exactly. like you said in the intro, you're curious. I'm a curious. We're very similar. Yeah. I that vibe. So I can sit there. Our podcast sometimes go for five hours, five hour podcast. Love it. You just fucking yap. And I've got so many questions. Really, I'm curious. Soak it up. And that's what the pod, the girlfriend and I want to start one now this year for high season. And the exact same thing is what you just said is that I can reach out to get that I can just want to talk to and people I'm just yeah. curious. And then maybe you start making connections and you ask some intelligent questions and then you're on their radar. And then when something comes up, that person might and then that's how it works and what's how okay I'm jesus nation you're getting nothing but nuggets from old uncle keith here today because i'm going to tell you guys something else so it. craig lives in canada like i do and we both have seen the unraveling of the canadian media industry yeah because it's been built on it's been built on 1980s philosophies big infrastructure mm -hmm. big overhead big salaries and i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that but it's really hard to unravel something that was built 30 years ago 40 years ago so what i've learned by doing my little morning show talk experiment and my live talk show experiment you talk about disrupting the live streaming, like your morning show ideas that are still like around on traditional FM or AM radio that's going to be moving to streaming. Because we both know that Netflix is yesterday's HBO. Netflix hooked us by giving us all this content off the bat and saying, hey, come here. And then over time, they've positioned back to advertising, live sports. And we all wake up saying, wait a minute, that's not Netflix, it's HBO in 2024. Mm. So we move from a mass culture to microcultures. But I really believe that by being able to create this new model underneath everybody's nose, it's the new media model of just showing up every single day, inexpensive production, good quality, using AI tools and meeting with smart people. I love that. I think that's exactly what it is. And breaking that down even further, it's like it's niched on top. Yes. And it's at on demand because no one's going to wait. Oh, my favorite TV shows on at 8 p.m. Like it's not happening. Yes. So it's niche and the people that you end up moving. If you're into craft beer, you're really yes. just going to find, and there's not that many pedants in that space. So you're going to yeah. lock in to the person that you like. Same as us talking about social media. There's a bunch of us doing it. And of the ones that we look up to, we're the smallest still, but it's okay. I know just that you're going to do it. 
I know we're going to, we're putting out, I believe, content, and they're saying things that actually patently aren't true. So I'm like, okay, we have a bit of an advantage. Plus we do this. We have a real agent done for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We've worked with Meta, like trillion dollar companies. They're still out. Y'all can't say it. So that's why just like you, you've sold your company, you grew it and you sold it for an extraordinary amount of money. You've done this. You've got a, a wealth of knowledge. You're a curious guy. You're entertaining and energetic and, pe and you can keep people entertain so then you have that i guess that advantage because you've you're experienced so th th this is we live in a culture that celebrates youth and i think while that's great yeah. do you remember when you were 20 i was a fucker. i didn't know anything you think at 20 yeah. why are we listening to 20 all the time i'm sure there's some stuff to say but come on man like they, they do we, this culture devalue uh experience and age and i hate well, that and i don't disagree with you at all frank i agree with you 100 where i what i think is happening though and i hope is happening frankly is that there's more value being contributed to those gray hairs and my gray hairs in your face because somebody's waking up going okay i got all this knowledge in my ai bot in my pocket but i really value craig's wisdom those experience like gray hair what did he learn by that gray hair coming out there oh man that was that road trip I did across the United States in this moment here, and I wouldn't do this, right? So I, I'm wondering, and I'm hopeful that our wisdom is what people are buying into more so mm -hmm. than you, you follow me. Like, there's more value for you and I than there ever has been. I think I couldn't agree more. So I guess I'm, I guess that's what I was trying to say, whilst yes. saying that the culture at large still overvalue. Say like right. in hip hop, right. another yes. problem. They always all the artists who are getting the share of the the attention are typically early 20s and yes. they haven't done anything they haven't really experienced anything they're just saying the same thing so there's an ageism in hip-hop that if i came across as maybe it's it's a raw nerve for me because there's people it's a, a younger genre so there hasn't been as much what is a 50 60 year old rap and now we have those jay's people are older and more esteemed and stuff but then as it got older there's there's people who devalue it the the gen z's or whatever are quick to brush that off and brush off that experience so i i find that's the that's something that always just irked me as I've gotten older. I found that is somewhat prevalent, but the truth of the matter is that the experience and that wisdom is our superpower. That's what makes things good. And every many other cultures worship yes. in, in yeah different places. So it's interesting. <laughs> That's actually true. Yeah. Other cultures do worship their elders, yet it seems in Western culture, we seem to dismiss it. Thank you. Or quickly cancel it. You think about, there's probably a reason Marshall Mathers stays somewhat under the radar because if people paid a lot of attention, a lot of attention to the content he created back when you and I were listening to it, there might be a lot of people not liking it. And I'm, and obviously I'm a huge fan of the fellow, but you're right. What, what does a 50 or 60 or 70 year old rapper look like? Snoop, Jay-Z. Content doesn't age very well in that genre, does it? Not as much. If you're going to listen back to Doggy Style, like <laughs> the misogyny is, whoa. And we know all the words. And when I was like 30, rapping every yes. word to that. And I was like, I had no doing that. And you say it now in this context, but you also can't judge the art from then. Those things were okay then listen to we're listening to actual martha Ma marshall math recently and some of the like the uh, the slurs you were using whilst it's at the time is not a big deal and listening back <laughs> oh my god it's like you can, it's crazy but you can't judge that art no you with with today's well, lens and that's i'm glad you use the word art because we still so i'm a free speech person it's funny because i ran a content moderation company but I I struggled many nights going to bed because I'm like, oh my God, I want to hear your point of view. I want to be able to allow freedom of speech. Yet we live in a world where that's not necessarily always the case. It is art. Yeah. And we do want to allow somebody to express themselves with their art. Here's a curious question for you. Mm. Let's throw it out there. Yeah. So you're a white guy trying to make it in the hip hop industry. Marsh Mathers and not many others are quite successful. So not only are you coming from Melbourne, not only are you not American, not only are you a white guy, you're trying to be an MC in a highly dominated black industry. I knew it was ridiculous, but I believed in it so much. Like you couldn't, I, I just knew it. And that was, I was thinking of it like this. Whilst I knew that all of those things, and I said that openly many times, yeah, I know, but I really believed in the product. And product yeah. was yes. doing. We never got what they call like bullying in here that could have helped us. That was our biggest, we had a lot of people supporting us, a lot of love, and that's what made going. I feel that the ultimate goal for it was to bring, was to meet my current, my girlfriend who the best. And now we're creating so many different things that wouldn't have happened if music didn't take me here. Mm -hmm. And I stuck mm -hmm. with it long. And now it can still just be a, a hobby or whatever. If I feel like doing it, let's do it. I got a few things I'm working on casually, very slowly with no deadlines or anything like that, which I love. But I can focus on the things that are moving the needle. The business is moving. The beer podcast, like it's still small. It's it's definitely monetized, but it could be a lot more. So we're continuing to do that. I don't know if there's many people. I think we're one of the first craft beer podcasts in Canada. And I feel like we're really contributing a it's lot to so it. It's so duh to me. I, when I stumbled upon it and I've consumed your content, it's great. 
great content. Kudos to you. It's professional. It's it's entertaining. It's informative. I enjoy it. So I'm all about entertaining and informing as well. And I think that's the society we're in right now, right? Which is I make fun of people that bore and inform, right? I'm about entertaining and informing. I'm, we're, we're both delivering the same message. I'm trying to deliver it in an entertaining way. And I, I like how you guys put your content together. Is it talk about that creative process? Of, of putting content together on a regular basis and what that is, is it, does it just come to you naturally or is it a structured process or how do you guys go about that? So for the beer so stuff, for the beer it's stuff. definitely very structured. Fortunately, once again, my girlfriend is the best stuff. So it was her idea for me to start the podcast and she okay. always like changes up the way things are and the way it's presented, say on yeah. Instagram, right? So for the pods, I initially had a pod, a, a co-host back in the day. He okay. sort of drifted away, had a family, lost interest, which was fine. Then I was doing it by myself for years. So I just handled literally everything she did the editing of the bigger videos and stuff but that was it now i have a co-host in ottawa and he like he does a lot of the um the, the email is great so i'll give him the details because i already have the relationship right. like i'll give him the details and he'll reach out and do the logistics on cc so i'm like boom so that makes it a lot easier but as far as creating the content now that we used to not do it virtual we used to only do it in person then obviously 2020 hit mm -hmm. moved to, to a virtual format which i prefer now we have a set we don't pull up at 2 p.m and interrupt somebody's day and then have to do the day drinking which i'm not a big fan <laughs> particularly for them they got to keep working and stuff so yeah be Creating the content is definitely, we do it every Thursday night. We do the pods and you have a, a real nice structure of actually recording everything. And it, it works perfectly now that obviously we do music. So my brother's an audio engineer, fortunately. Yeah. So then he edited it, mix it and everything. So everything always sounds tight. Now we don't edit the video with a whole thing on YouTube. So the actual process has gotten simpler over time. Yes. And then for social, then I'll just clip. And my girlfriend, it was regularly whenever she's like, yeah, I'm bored of this. Let's change it, present and stuff like that. So we're going to put out, share like a one minute reel. If we had more time, and I, I know that there's like an AI thing for say Adobe Premiere Pro, but there isn't for Final Cut, which we use to work at Apple. So we have all Apple stuff. Mm -hmm. It'd be sick to get that AI thing because it could pick some of the best spots and I could have five clips and then share that more often as opposed mm -hmm. to just doing one. So that would be what I would like to do is if I wasn't, if this was all I did, then I think. So I'll tell you, my friend, I use Opus Clip or okay. Capsule or Descript. So Opus, I'll flip the old YouTube clip into the, so Opus.pro. I would encourage you to try it out. I, I could not encourage you enough to try it out. Got it. That's one of the tools that I use here on the show, opus.pro. You'll take your YouTube clip or the video from the show, put it in there. Less than 20 minutes later, you'll have as many clips as you want. And you can and they start. do a good job. They do actually a quite spectacular job. If anything, the tool is contributing to what you talked about a number of moments ago, which was all of the digital noise contributing to society, right? Because right. now you take that 60 minute show and all of a sudden Keith has endless clips, right? Which interestingly enough, I read a fascinating strategy about, about somebody talking about YouTube shorts. Your strategy with a short is to try to get them out of the short as quick as possible to get them to your full show. So they're saying keep the short as like keep it like 20 seconds, something like that? Yes, but give learning where to give you enough, but not too much mm -hmm. where it's saying, Craig, get to the show, get to the full show, because that's really where you're gonna monetize this thing. Which then it says to me, okay, if that's the case, I need tons of clip, right? Yeah, and YouTube Shorts algorithms kill us. So it, good. It, I had one go viral. My first one went viral yesterday, and it was like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's how it works. Hell yeah. Right. Did that result in views? Because I guess you tied it to the it clip. Did. Yeah, the original it did, which, video. Was, yep. which was quite neat. So when you're seeing those things happen in real time, okay, I see how that works. I see how that works. More, just more. Than, it's just more clips. So it's volume, but value. It, it is, and I hate to say this, and I, you're a marketer and so am I, and I, I'll just say what it is. I, I don't know why I would create two hours a day of content, Craig. Mm -hmm. So our hour show here today, my hour morning show with some great content, great segments, and let it sit on the shelf there and collect dust and not share it with somebody who doesn't cost me. Right. Know, knowing that the YouTube algorithm might find something somebody likes down the road going, oh, so a year and a half down the road, somebody likes this and it takes off. So there's so many people saying, well, don't create, you only know, create one post a day, two posts a day. It was funny, duh. So when I create one or two posts on LinkedIn, I get okay engagement. But when all of a sudden I go three or four times po posts on, on, on LinkedIn, I get four times more engagement. Of course, because I'm posting more content. Right. And this daily? Yeah. Okay. And engaging. So not only am I posting, but I'm engaging. And it's, it is because I can't rest. Because here's the other thing that I wrestle with. If I'm not engaging in front of you, you're not knowing about me. If I'm not in front of you, I'm forgotten with you. And because we live in an attention economy, there's the next Keith Bill is showing up in front of you. There's right. the next artist showing up in front of you. So I do come from the belief of I need to stay in Craig's stream of consciousness all the time 
to get to the point where he's, yeah, okay, I either like the guy or I don't like the guy. Because to me, the alternative is if I don't do it, Craig, we live in a world where somebody else will. There's somebody else that will say, well, Keith, fuck, I see Keith showing up every single day. Well, tell you what, he's doing two hours a day. I'm going to do three. Am I wrong? I don't think I am. I think you're right. I think it might, all I would say, add to that, I think you're 100% right. I think the only thing is niche itself. So because yes, you're covering a wide variety of topics. I think it makes much more sense to do that more aggressive approach, which is just that volume of content. I think for for beer like for the even the high season because it's education yes we got to tone it back we did a test recently and it was we did 30 days of reels every single day and it didn't go as well as posting say interesting yes much better but i think it was specific to our niche and i think it's the same with beer i think are people going to get sick of it if i do monday through friday and i post a different reel and short every single day from the same podcast for that released that is that going to get old is it going to get like, annoying but I wonder, have i seen this before and they'll scroll out over because it'll look this but i'm wondering though craig if we're if we're looking at through a lens that's dated and i'm wondering if you're not looking at it through a first principles lens, which is saying to yourself, okay, I know that the value is in engagement and in creating community and in creating current conversation. If I'll speak for you, if I, Craig, could every single day, you're awake every single day at a certain time anyway. If I can wake up every single day and engage with my community, five minute touch, a five minute conversation, a five minute check-in, not to be noisy for them, but just to keep ourselves all accountable, keep ourselves all drinking the same Kool-Aid. It's almost like the pre- it's almost like when you went to school and the principal addressed you at the beginning of the day, right? right. It's like, okay, I, 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 got, I set the tone. Like I'm wondering to myself, and I'm just on the spot with you right now. It's like we're doing like a live kind of business class here, but I'm asking myself, geez, is there enough little snippets of content every single day where Craig can drop in and say, hey, everybody, what's shaking? Here's some news from this. Putting it out there five minutes every single day, a few clips, but really with the point of not creating noise every single day, just this idea of checking in and connecting with your community. I love that. The I think you're 100 also 100% correct is and you need to be there and show up. So what does that look like if you're talking like right. clickable thing? Does that mean you're sharing a clip from one of the shows? Does it mean you're sharing an article, a status update, a question, right. a poll? What does that look like? Or or is it a daily conversation, Craig? Okay. Is it a daily topic, right? So is it a daily the and how do you is, is it BIOS or the BAOS podcast? BAOS, yeah. Yes, BAOS. the BAOS podcast. So is it maybe the again, just spitting with you out loud right now, but is it the BAO the BOS daily conversation? Today we have a topic, right? And it's just a it's really the purpose is to generate a call to action, generate something with your audience, right? Just to right. I mean, maybe generate a connection. And I'm only raising it because I just I'm I see all this content coming out and you say, okay, so that who's the next craft beer person that's going to decide to do it every day. So I, I got an example, actually, now you're saying this and this, I'm glad you brought this up because I'm going to try and remember this now. Yeah. I saw a brewery yesterday in the States and they posted just on Instagram and it was just one of the, just like a graphic square. It was like, Hey, post your craft beer, unpopular opinion. And they had hundreds and cause there's going to be, people always want to throw their two cents in. So that type of stuff I think would be good. And that's what we were doing. Things got a little crazy since we yeah. moved here, but yeah. I was posting aggressively once a day across every every single day. And it took a, a lot of time because I was always taking these really nice photos. Yes. The cameras were taking yes. these photos. I'm yes. like, I think it was that was too much of that one type of content between the podcast promotion. So we're living over the border from Buffalo here. We went there last Friday. We went to a brewery and a beer bar and we made sure we took photos of that place and then posted that up, tag all the brewery, all of them follow back, share it on their stories or whatever. Yes. yes. And I'm doing that across everywhere. Facebook, thread, don't forget threads, Twitter, yes, uh, Instagram, the whole lot. But I'm like, okay, what else aside from that's great when I'm going somewhere, what else can I do? And I think that's maybe what you're referring to. Whereas even if it's not us, us. it's still about the community. And we're like, yes, tell us what you think about X. Highlighting your community, saying maybe it's taking something from the community and giving back to the community. Maybe it's, if you think about it, Craig, your stakeholders, and I I know you're thinking about this, but sometimes I think when we talk to somebody, we we see things through a different perspective. I'm wondering if you're not thinking about all of your stakeholders that are in part of your podcast. Like your stakeholders aren't just your listeners. You got stakeholders that are the suppliers of the beer company. You have these, you have stakeholders that are your employees. You have stakeholders that are your friends. You have stakeholders that are your listeners. You have stakeholders of the beer vendors. Like you have a diverse group of stakeholders that might find interest in the, co- I like the content you're creating is great. And, and I see people with their great content. I'm saying, geez, I wonder how, again, just from that community perspective. I ask myself how you can further give more value back to the stakeholders you're not even thinking about right now. 
just mm. curious question. I love this. This is great because it, it, when I saw that post, yes, I really should do something like that. And then I got distracted. And yeah. now bringing it up, the way you're positioning, this is great. This is great for me. So thank you. But it's also great for the audience. You are pushing something. That is, that's really what you got to do is find a way to just even just ask the question, find out about people. And it comes back to what you said earlier. If you're asking questions they're gonna about them, they're going to want to know more about you. And all that engagement lives on your part. Your exactly. Exactly. Back to you regardless. And are we not living in an era, Craig, where it's all about managing, controlling your narrative? Mm -hmm. Somebody else can't control your narrative. I wonder sometimes to myself why more CEOs don't have a, and I'm not going to use the word talk show, but I'll use it as the metaphor, like a daily conversation. Mm -hmm. Every single morning, create a five minute show, a, 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 a conversation with a question for all your stakeholders, your staff your employees, the world, like just everybody. It's like that address. Hey, here's what's shaking today at XYZ company. Mm. I'm stepping in. I'm feeling great today. Did you guys all take care of yourselves today as human beings? Like just those, kind of those I don't know, just that like old school leadership addressing the group, putting the narrative out there. Maybe I'm trying to tell you something today that I want you to really pay attention to come April. Mm. I got to plant the seed today because come April is really going to be important. Maybe, maybe I want you to start paying attention to something that's really going to become important in July that you don't even know about, but I'm going to start mentioning it today in my narrative with you. I'm asking you a question today that's really important in July. Nobody knows why you're asking it, but you know why you're asking it. Follow me. I'm very much, and it's very much you controlling the narrative so somebody else doesn't because you know what your narrative is going to be at the end of this year and where your story is taking you so those are some of the things that i ask myself especially craig as i've done this live show because mm. say, keith why do you do it live and here's my answer because i'm recording it anyways right so why not do it live have a conversation when we you know sometimes i had a show a couple weeks back we had a ton of engagement today i've been very much on our conversation so i haven't focused on the engagement side of things but I, i'm there's value in live dialogue there's value in live communication right and i, I think it's getting lost in recording ai perfection package it up send it out in the podcast and then walk away. It's like walking on a, it's like walking on a cocktail party saying, Hey, Craig was shaking and then walking away. <laughs> hey, Craig was shaking and walking away. I'm just dropping into your party and then I'm leaving you. Right. Oh, what, what's going on? Do you think that, and this is interesting because one thing I noticed at the Instagram live, bring it back to the social yeah. stuff. I yeah. feel like we went live at the bit for BOS in COVID. We called it like the quarantine edition of this podcast and we were doing live every Thursday. Yes. And the numbers were decent. Then as things slowly opened back up, the numbers, so then we stopped. The gram lives obviously were also popping at the time and then they slowly ran off here. Do you think then that the live format is the antidote to the roboticness of AI? It brings it back to that human thing that is undeniable. Unless it's a deep fake or something, say it is a real human like you, what you're doing. Do you think that is that balance it out and be like, hey, where everyone else is using AI for every single part of it, whether it's a tool, which I guess I'm not talking about that, but to replace something that a human's fire, write a real caption that actually says something real, create, so, put something out into the world. Do you think the live balances that? I'm glad you asked the question because I'm betting everything on it. Because while the world is pivoting to AI generated content and AI videos and AI talking heads, which is awesome. I use all the tools as much as anybody does. And believe me, I'll be supplementing that stuff in my content. Right. I w absolutely will. But the human connection that I get my audience and you and I, and like right now we got however many people on the stream. There wasn't that many people on the stream three, three weeks, three weeks ago, three months ago. But by Keith, the human being showing up every single time, I think Craig, we just look back to history to look at the future. And it's the same reason people tuned into their trustworthy talking heads on linear television you get used to trusting somebody because they're always showing up mm -hmm. right and in a world where trust is trust has eroded in western media i'm hoping that by people going fuck this billis guy shows up every single day if he's saying this it must be i'm not gonna use the word it. true but it must, there must be some value behind it because he's not fake. He's, he's right. not generating fake stuff. He's showing up as a real human being. So maybe that person's going to give me a little bit more attention than somebody who's doing it all with AI. So that's what I'm, and I think, and I'll tell you something else too. I think the Netflix effect hasn't hit us again yet as society. And I'll share with you what I mean. As I said, Netflix is not longer what it was back when we first got introduced to Netflix. It's stuff does not get binge watched. It gets distributed week by week. They're now doing live sports, live programming. I'm wondering if culturally society begins to move back again over the next five to seven years as streaming television moves back to appointment television viewing where we start to create some mass cultures again. Hmm. Where, okay, three o'clock or set, Thursday night at six o'clock, we're watching what, Love is Blind who crashed the... Say, yeah, the, the live uh, last year. The live right? So yeah. I, I don't... And here's the thing, Craig. We both know because we're smart enough because we were around since MySpace was invented in 2012. I'm sorry, in 1880. The technology underlying all this this hasn't been available yet to do live 
okay, we're going to invite 100 million people to come watch Love is Blind right now. Look what happened. Boom. But we know that in 2025 and in 2026, the technology to do that, to do mass broadcasting in these immersive experiences, that's just around the corner. Hmm. So I think that there is going to be, a, a, I, I could be wrong, but what I'm hopeful for, Craig, is that I get to have both sides of it because I get to go live, package it up, edit it with all these great AI tools, and then distribute it on demand. That's interesting. I think you're right. Now, as you're saying this, I'm thinking of more and more examples of maybe like a, a human urge to connect because whilst it's cool that there's so many things, there's something for everybody, there's nothing that we connect. Why does talk radio still exist, Craig? Why does talk okay. radio still exist on AM radio across North America and Sirius XM? Put fucking podcasts aside. Why does live talk radio still exist? Why are Canadian AM stations in this country still trying to get FM talk radio stations in this country? Because mm. people in the morning still want to connect with human beings they still want to know okay i see craig and keith are going to be there at eight o'clock in the morning it's going to help me get through my day because i have some i don't know man i'm not trying to say this is the all that the podcast did craig was solve a problem mm. because streaming wasn't because it, it cost too much money back when you had your iphone 3g to go stream your content so you had to podcast it you had to record it on your cassette or your eight track or your cd but don't kid yourself. I'll make a statement. Podcasts are dead in five years from now. Why do you think that? Why Do you PVR anything anymore? You never did. Isn't PVRing a podcast? I guess so, because that's what you mean watching on. Yeah. So I, let me rephrase that. So I, yeah. So I, then the term podcast and that ideology of creating content, recording it and distributing it in that format, I think YouTube is going to kill it all because the, because video is not only going to kill people want all senses fulfilled right. right so i think video is going to kill it all and then just this whole expectation of live on demand a ubiquitous entertain me with content i so sure the podcast format but i just i think that the ideology of it is different from why it originally was started does that make sense to you yeah i'm starting to i think i know what you mean and a lot of podcasts like all of our stuff's on you as well so i feel like yes. that's like, with the video format i imagine the same thing 100 percent. but it's yeah. as much a terminology thing i think is what i'm talking about right because right, right. we both know when podcasts were, were introduced to the world with the iphones it was record talking spoken word or it shows and you download it to your device so you're not eating up bandwidth and you can consume it offline as we spend more and more time streaming spending time offline it doesn't really matter whether it's on youtube or podcast does it not particularly you're just consuming the content spotify has, spotify has moved to video apple's encouraging they're apparently they're moving to encouraging video we're just moving to a world of on-demand video i feel like that's a great point i feel like with spotify the only because they bought anchor and then anchor became spotify. Yeah. what is it spotify yeah. or some shit they the only way that I'm aware of currently to get video podcast on Spotify is their own distribution, but then you can't put it anywhere else, which sucks because I was going to change. So I love the fact that we're talking because I'm love because I'm learning so much from you that I hopefully that I can share some learnings back with you. Yeah, there you have. So I host my show, my podcast on Substack. Okay. I feed it out via RSS feed to mm -hmm. YouTube and all the platforms. Okay. I go to Spotify, which which takes my RSS feed from my platforms and it takes my feed. I then add my videos. It, using which platform to? Spotify. They've now added the functionality. They got they got a hamburger menu, click the buttons. <laughs> I can't even show you right oh. now. And you can upload the videos. So you can upload the videos independently. So oh, because, no. because, my, because my shows aren't hosted on Spotify, they're RSS into Spotify. Oh my. Spotify, yes, exactly. But Spotify has now given you the option to add the videos to every single episode independently. So I've added to my workflow, show's over, download video, go into Descript, edit it, upload to Spotify, boom, boom. You're the GOAT. That's amazing news. That was not, last time I looked, when, like not that long ago, it absolutely was not. You are right. We're talking, like I haven't been in this game very long. We're talking uh, weeks, like if, if only a few months. So I, I would, so if, if that's helpful for your workflow and for your, and for Business Athlete Nation, it, it's certainly. Bro, as soon as we get off, I'm going to look into that. It will take me a long time. I got 400 episodes or something, but I'll see if they're, if I, how far back I can go and just maybe slow over time just upload everything because that would be i love watching rogan on there because rogan's basically the only thing that has the video I yes people will well hey you got a uncle keith over here now craig on spotify okay. with video so you can follow okay. me on your pal as well absolutely, absolutely. Need. that's awesome see that's great but that's awesome and if that's going to help podcasts remain more relevant yes then let's go if you're not doing video on podcasts and i think that's going to remove so when i when i talk about like, like podcasts are dead again in some ways i'm also what i'm meaning is that if you are reluctant to embrace what we're doing right now 
I don't know, like you're going to ha- have to be quite unique, I think. Cause I think that as I think that just society is, we want all of our senses fulfilled yeah. and listen, as Apple is releasing vision pro and meta and f- spatial computing is like our senses are only becoming more fulfilled, not less. So I just, I don't know those that aren't embracing video I, and those that are only doing podcasts. What, here, here's a statement. If you're doing a podcast once a month, once every few weeks, and it's only audio only just fucking pack it up because you're wasting your time. Basically. You're just wasting your time. Yeah. So either do video and do it regularly or just don't even do it. Spend time with your kids or your wife. True yeah. story. I couldn't agree more. And the consistency is everything. If you're not showing up consistently, then don't bother. If you're just doing maybe five episodes one month and next month, you just skip. Don't. It's okay. kind of like you said. You are there in the morning, there twice a day, and they know it's true. And, and I'll tell you something, my friend, as we work towards wrapping up, you've been very gracious with your time. And I'm, I, okay. I can't believe we've been at 75 minutes already. Our, awesome. our audience is we've got great viewers right now, people are digging our conversation. So I'm thankful to Business Athlete Nation because I think we're teaching people stuff, right? I, mm-hmm. I, would, I would say that as I lost my train of thought here, the we talked about this daily conversation or you being curious about what a daily conversation would look like. Mm-hmm. Again, I share a secret with you. The reason I did a daily talk show was because it held me accountable to showing up every single day. When I got in front of the microphone in front of LinkedIn, YouTube, X in the world and said, hey, Craig, I'll be here tomorrow. Holy fuck, I'll be here tomorrow because my brand and my integrity and my 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 who I am is on the line. So when I tell Craig I'm showing up tomorrow, Craig's holy shit. And you know what happened, Craig? About three and a half months into this thing, about a month ago, it was one week, it was a Thursday. All mm-hmm. these messages start showing up across all my channels. Billis, yeah? You're fucking serious, man. What, what, what we're about? You're actually showing it started building this immense amount of trust. Followers started going up, engagement started going up because people knew that, okay, he clearly is meaning what he's saying. Because mm-hmm. again, back to talk radio. Back to talk radio, right? It's okay. I want to commit to listening to this new morning show in Hamilton with Craig and, and Alex, but I don't know if they're going to be around next week. Or want to commit to something or, or get involved with something that they don't know is going to be. Right? Definitely. Yeah. So five, five minutes a day, I was like, oh, hey, yeah, there's the BOS podcast. Five minutes a day to start my day. Give me a tip about beer. Give me a tip about living a healthy life. Give me a tip about saying, hey, maybe you don't have any beer today because I'm looking out for you as a human being, Mr. Human. When really... What you're doing is you're saying, I- I'm here about beer, but I also know better that sometimes maybe putting the beer aside is okay, right? So it's, it's just taking up a, a different point of view. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, just giving you no, that. I love this. This is planting seeds. It's uh, this is great for me, but I think it's also really great for the audience to hear that that's got to be the approach. How can you give? How can you engage people every day? And if you think of it, I think the best example was you said like either the, the school principal or like the yeah. uh, the CEO doing the morning check-in with the with the people. And it doesn't have to be morning. I'm nope. a night owl. I don't get up early. Yeah, early. It could be, if, yeah, your brand's a night brand because you're a beer brand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not trying to drink. Maybe it. it's the 10 o'clock check-in. What do you, are you having a beer tonight? You know what I mean? I don't know. Just a regular kind of thing. And with TikTok live and Instagram live, like your ability to own like a, people get conditioned. You're a routine guy, probably like me. And I bet you if you sat back and looked at your life, I'll tell you a little test I did. I know we got to go here, but I wanted to stream into LinkedIn in the morning to see if people are showing up. Sure enough, they are just like we do with morning radio. So if people have their routines at 10 o'clock every single night and Craig's part of their routine, people become faithful to you. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock. I've seen it happen. Sure you have. Absolutely. Yeah. Craig, how can they find you? How can they get engaged with you? How can they enjoy all the awesome content that you are making on the BOS podcast and, and the beer channel, your music? I really want you to take a second here to talk about you and talk about the business and make sure that if there's anything I haven't drawn under this that you have the opportunity to talk about. It. For sure, man. This has been phenomenal, by the way. It's such a great love, love the way that this came about. So thank you so much. Super thoughtful. I am really appreciate it. If anyone is interested in craft beer, so it's called at BAOS podcast. So BAOS podcast.com at BAOS podcast on every social platform. If you, we go every Wednesday. So today is Wednesday. Basically in the morning, we have the audio drop in the evening at 8 p.m. The live, uh, the video premiere YouTube. Uh, super fun. We have a whole bunch of great stuff uh, coming up. That's the, the pod stuff for the beer for the social media stuff. So if you are looking for social tips, so I'm yapping about, we have an agency called High Season Co. So that's High Season Co dot com and at high season co everywhere we're primarily we're on every platform but primarily the main stuff i would encourage you to check out is our instagram the youtube we have videos every week different social media tips mostly around instagram because post anything else people fucking don't so we want to we're trying to get the stuff but uh, mostly about instagram and, and youtube is the primary stuff there we have a youtube members as well if you really want that additional help and obviously there's things that we have consulting if people need type of stuff so 
that's all the social media and the music we also have a music podcast called bad habits with c and notion so the easiest way to find that i guess you could find that just spotify and apple Podcasts. it's bad habits with c double e and if you look for bad habits there's too many of them and if you want to follow me personally it's at c double e f o r and twitter that'd be probably be the best places and all the music is on basically all platforms under c once again if i had a new in 2002 that it was going to be streaming 20 years later i wouldn't have had the simplest fucking name up cwe and the easiest way to find it like search for c and then the last album was called relentless so c relentless and that'll come up otherwise you gotta wait this is a whole other hour from a marketing perspective about your name isn't it because it really I, is There's so much to talk about with that i would think from the outside you're like oh yeah a three-letter name Brilliant branding, brilliant opportunity with it. But I'll be also honest with you as a marketer, I'm looking at it going, I can see all these inherent challenges that you have with it as well. So oh, that's man. a whole other episode. Will you come back again? See? Dude, I would love that. I would really love this. I'd appreciate that. I would very much appreciate that. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I'm only stopping because I want to be respectful of your time. And I got to go car shopping with my son. We're off to buy a car today. So Dad, love it. Dad, yeah, cutting checks, man. Cutting checks. <laughs> so, <laughs> Craig, I'm going to say goodbye. You say goodbye to the audience. I'll put you back in the green room. I'm going to say goodbye to the audience and walk you back out. So hang tight for a second. No worries. Hang tight. One second here. All right. There you go. That was awesome. I hope you guys learned as much as I did. Great conversation, digital marketing, Bay OS podcast, learning, learning, and giving y'all gold nuggets to take home today. So if you're tuning in late, go back to the beginning. There's lots of stuff to take from there. If you got a podcast, if you're streaming, if you're wondering how to cut shows up into tight clips because you're taking too long for processes, I gave Craig, I gave C a tip on using Opus.pro. A lot of good stuff on today's show. So I invite you to check it out. Go back and, and listen to it. And of course, we drop here in the podcast. We go podcast, eight tracks, CD, cassette, reels, every single technology platform available, we produce too. There you have it. All right, I'm out of here. Be back tomorrow morning. Mornings in the lab with myself and Nicole Bernard. Uh, we don't have a guest tomorrow. We got no generative fake girlfriends. It's going to be Keith and Nicole drinking some coffee, having conversations, setting the start of your day. You know where to find us. 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I am going to get out of here. Oh.